Hey, that worked out pretty good. Yeah. How's it going? Pretty good. I'm surrounded by these awesome California redwoods. Oh, I was so, going to ask where you're at. Yeah. California. Yeah, we're we're in Casadero. Uh, it's like two and a half hours north of San Francisco, and it's very mountainous, hilly, and lots of redwoods. So, how long are you guys out there for? First week of June, so we'll be here for about a month. Um, and it's it, you know this family, they're pretty great. They have a handful of goats, uh, some chickens and stuff like that. They have mountain lions that roam the hillsides. They have springs that they get all their water from, and they're off grid. So, oh, nice! It's pretty cool. Yeah, you're probably learning <laughs> a ton. Yeah, you know, we're learning a ton um, and learning the coolest thing. We're learning how lots of different people do things differently. Um, and one of the things I enjoy is every day, multiple times a day, we have to go get water from the spring. Um, and here especially, and since we've been like traveling for the month prior to getting here, we were very aware of like how much or how little water we use. Um because we didn't always have access to potable water in certain places, uh, traveling from Texas to here. So then we're like filtering and like, uh, don't waste water here. It's, and it's, that's been kind of an interesting part water wise. And then having like a clean, fresh spring to drink out of and gather water from daily has been so fun for me. Um, and then kind of getting into some weird stuff. Um, I've been like, uh, more recently th this past week, uh, giving an offering of like my first sip of coffee to the spring every day um, to practice some animism stuff. So that's been kind of fun uh, to just thank it for, you know, just being there, providing life to this, uh, this little valley or whatever we're in. So every, every human society is always settled by water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, is Annie around too? Or are we just chit chatting? Uh, she's on kid duty. Ah, great. <laughs> So yeah, the boys the boys are they're needing a little extra support today. So yeah. So um we can just like we'll do a little the intro for the channel and then we'll catch up. And I think what we're gonna do is just catch up with how uh explain your, your program a little more because we sent it out and yeah. um how to be human was it how to be human workshop? Space holder space holder workshop. And then I, I okay. got the link out to everybody and get to that list of names. But this way, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe we could put the link to it if you're selling it in the description for this video or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. We can good. do that for sure. Yep. All right. Let's see if this helps. I don't know if that makes any difference. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. You're kind of lighting. So oh. It must work. <laughs> All right. And then there's the shadow that was plugging me. They're going to hang in the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, are you guys um where are you going next uh we're supposed to be going to meet my family in south dakota for vacation like my mom dad sister um but we're gonna stop and see my sister for like a weekend in oregon where she lives now and then we'll come across and then we're gonna be in minnesota hopefully for a month on another wolf farm but she might need to actually cancel on us because she's having trouble with uh, farm interns. But mm -hmm. then we're going to hopefully be back in uh, Wisconsin for July, August. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, figuring it out what we're going to do because that'll bring us to a year basically. And then we got to figure out what we're going to do. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, with our life. <laughs> cool. Uh, what's the, what's the yeah. name of your program, like officially? It is moving through the feminine seasons, a natural movement approach. Oh. Yeah. Natural movement approach. All right, so I can remember that. Yeah. Does it seem good? Yeah, I can't read that, but as long as you can. <laughs> 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 uh, legible okay and then uh 
Do you want me to use your full name or just you guys you at Rock and Annie so people can't track you down? Uh, you can just say Rock. Rock and Annie or just Rock, right? I mean, we I have a level of public presence just on social media, so there's that, right? You know, and here, uh, these tigers go wild, okay? <clears throat> yeah, so we can start, we'll start it like that, and then we'll just chit chat for a while, and then we can clip it at that. Yeah. Yeah, so good. Okay, uh, Uncivilized Vitality, Dr. Mori and Bonnie, our local chapter scribe, are here talking to uh, Rock. Uh, these tigers go wild. Uh, it's dot com or these tigers go wild on the on the gram. These tigers go wild on the gram, YouTube. The gram, yeah. the YouTube. And we're going to talk yeah. to Rock a little bit about uh, his program. Um, you know, <laughs> moving. moving through the feminine season, the national movement approach. So Rock's got this new program together, and uh, Bonnie is um, postpartum doula. Mm -hmm. Is that correct way to say that? Yeah. Postpartum doula. So you two work a lot with uh, the feminine season, the menstrual cycle, and the uh, intense complexity of the the, the female hormone uh, um, mm -hmm. experience that changes monthly. And uh, natural movement can have a great uh, great impact on that, a positive impact. So I'll let you guys kind of. We'll let Rock describe his program a little bit, and then you guys can chime in. I'll just provide any comedic relief as necessary. Sounds good. Yeah, so the guide I created is roughly a 30-page guide, and it shows and demonstrates and discusses all the things on how movement, specifically natural movement, can support women through the different seasons of life. And the seasons that I choose for womanhood is menstrual cycle so actively menstruating women and then season two is uh prenatal and then season three is postpartum and then the fourth season is peri slash menopause um and i kind of group you know i feel like as far as the spectrum of women goes especially as they enter like you know proper adulthood um i feel those four seasons are very distinct in their hormones, their complexities, their movement behaviors and patterns, all those things. And they each kind of, you know, can then even be further broken down, like menstruating women, which is where my guide originally started. I had four phases to coincide with like four seasons. So it was menses, so active bleeding, uh, follicular, ovulation, and then uh, luteal. And so it was like menses was winter, Follicular was spring, ovulatory was summer, and then luteal was fall, and kind of trying to sync up the energies of those seasons with the energies of the, the cycle. And so that's kind of where I started, I don't know, like five years ago now, maybe four. Um, and then they kind of just slowly built up um, after some other credentialing and just thinking more about the complexity that is the female experience as it relates to movement, exercise, et cetera. And there's just very different needs. Like the needs you have as a menopausal woman are very different than the needs of a pregnant woman um, and a menstruating woman, right? And so my guide kind of goes like high level physiological overview of each of those. And then what are the top concerns? And then how can movement help you move through the various obstacles of those phases? Um, like even with the menses stuff or the menstrual cycle stuff, I get into what are different hormones. So people can just like, what is uh, estrogen? What is progesterone? What are all these things? And, you know, we go through the definitions so people can build up that vocabulary. Um, yeah, that's you kind are, of the gist of the guide. Do you take, um, so like pre, pre menarche like pre-pubertal um, females, are we just leaving that kind of because kids naturally move? They don't need a lot. Uh, I would say I didn't tackle that because that hasn't been too much of my experience as a fitness professional. I've worked with mostly women my entire career. So even when I was like doing internships and college work experience and undergrad, you know, all the way through my career, I've worked with mostly women and they've either been menstruating women, prenatal, postpartum, or peri slash menopausal. So I just took 15 years to put this guide together. <laughs> based on all the previous experience. And I haven't worked with a lot of kids in the sense of what are they looking, whether it's body composition, health, et cetera, because I just haven't worked with a lot of kids. And I would say historically, for the most part, kids are 
naturally healthier, um, but that also depends on where you are uh, and, and who your parents are. I just wanted to mention the three men are uh, season four, just that's a completeness. Uh, but yeah, kids, uh, boys and girls, both in T hit, you know, eight to pre-pubertal, that, that stage. I mean, the movement necessities are all the same. The skill levels are about the same. Yeah. So when puberty sets in, that we take a, a drastic turn. Yeah. Yeah. And something I've wanted to really get into with uh, younger women, especially, is starting to correlate injuries and performance in and around their cycle. But first, we have to educate young girls on one, they are menstruating cyclical beings, and they shouldn't like hide from that and they should embrace it. But then we also have to get, like, we'll say the coaching world to acknowledge that if women are ovulating or on their period, that performance will be different and the risk of injury could be increased if you're maximally competing while on your period or close to your period. Uh, but we don't want to, like, I don't think a lot of, we'll say male and female sports coaches are ready for, to have that conversation. Um, Cause it's kind of, you know, icky. You, you think this would fall um, uncivilized vitality under the movement. We have natural movement is vital. And then number two is yeah. uh, move on purpose. So this would be kind of fall right in line with movement. Number two. Different. Exactly. And, and I think about, you know, if we take that natural movement is, you know, a huge pillar of uncivilized vitality, and we then have the opportunity to break that down, especially when we want to get like, what are the differences between males and females hormonally and acknowledging that those are real things. But then even for women, like it gets a little more nuanced. Like, John, you and I, if we're healthy men, our cycles every 24 hours, right? We PMS every day, right? <laughs> um, and that's that's easy to train. And so if we look at like, you know, linear periodization training, all those other things, most of the training that's research, like it benefits kind of looking at how men hormonally live and train where women, especially menstruating women, it's kind of, well, we have to wait a month, right? To get that second follicular phase. Then we have to wait three months to have three phases, right? In follicular, ovulatory, et cetera, where men, we can be like, oh, we had 12 weeks of training. That was easy. We could see some serious significant gains uh, you know, but then we could look at perimenopausal and menopausal women who I I've been sharing the jacked grandma memes because as you get into that age, you know, estrogen stops becoming uh, stops producing. And then you have this like untapped testosterone level that's been there, it's just no longer competing. And you you can you know, if you just Google jack grandmas, you see like all these like professional amateur grandmothers, bodybuilding power to this crazy amount of testosterone that's not crazy levels right because they're still women uh but they're doing these really cool things Can anyone confirm my theory but my theory is that you have this ability to develop extra skeletal muscle and strength in menopause because you're no longer a menstruating woman and that is the like evolutionary adaptation. Like what are the main concerns with women as they age? Sarcopenia, osteoporosis, osteopenia. But then all of a sudden you have this ability to generate like high amounts of skeletal muscle and strength. Well, yeah. Why wouldn't it like work out that way? Right. Yeah, like it's like, it's oh it's built in that way. Yeah, it was it was built in. And I had like I remember one day I was like, oh, so it shouldn't be cardio. Like old women should not be walking and jogging. They should be like banging weights. Yeah. Um, and so like in my guide, I talk about, you know, older women just need to train like meatheads, right? Just deadlift, curls, you know, all kinds of stuff. Now, Carrie Ann, uh, my wife has been able to, she's going through yeah. lean or more muscular phases through her life. Now we're, cl I'm north of 50, but she's closing in on that. She's putting mm -hmm. on, uh, more muscle, uh, almost, I want to say easier, but she's putting on more muscle and she's in this, yeah. uh, she's on this kick now where she wants to. <laughs> She's been doing freestanding handstand push-ups because all our, our boys, <laughs> uh, you know, the youngest, yeah. even, you know, the oldest in mid twenties, yeah. they're all they're all heavy, heavily muscled. But now she can get up. In the last three months, she's taught herself to hold a handstand and do a couple push-ups. Just yeah, yeah. So she's putting on. She's getting actually stronger the older she gets because she's kind of naturally uh, training like that. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. You know, which is so interesting because the the typical story is the uh 
the perimenopause spread where we start to see an accumulation of excess body fat and other things. But I, you know, I don't think it's as simple as like, we just lift weights, even though that has been somewhat of my anecdotal experience is when we start training more to that, like what has worked for men, like heavy strength training, uh, low levels of cardio, where historically I think we have a lot of hormone imbalance issues and disruption issues because women have been sold how to train earlier in life and that is catching up with them later in life and we're trying to now like fix some stuff and like go backwards but like not that it's too late but like we have to overcome all those ill-advised training recommendations from previous in life like i remember uncovering some of this with bone density uh you know, you build bone density as a woman, your peak bone density years are your late, late teens through early 30s. But that's when a lot of women have been on birth control. And we've learned recently that hormonal birth control specifically inhibits bone density growth, right? And building. So like, we've had these women who this is when they're supposed to build peak bone density. If they've been on any kind of oral contraceptive, they're negating that entirely just due to birth control. And like, that's not like, you know, your PCP or your gyno is not like, hey, did you know that you're not going to be able to build bone density? <laughs> right? But here, take this anyways. So that's in the, like, the prenatal season, right? Yeah. Like during those childbearing when you're, you're trying to uh, have have your family start building, right? Uh, what about the, the postpartum season? So we talked about perimenopause, menopausal, more yeah. low heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. And then what? Yeah. I just got a postpartum client. What is she going to do when mm -hmm. they start saying, what should I do to work? So, out? yeah. So let's like pregnancy. Uh, let's start there because then they they kind of overlap a little bit in terms of what we do during pregnancy affects what we need to do somewhat uh, in postpartum phase. So pregnancy is, you know, the rule of thumb is don't do anything you haven't already done. Like if you've been doing CrossFit at a high level, as long as it's a healthy pregnancy, you can do CrossFit at a high level. Just don't do anything new. Uh, the big thing that affects, you know, women postpartum is a lot of pressure management issues. And I use pressure management as the big umbrella of things like uh, prolapse, hernias. So, you know, whether it's, you know, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Let's well, say pelvic org organ prolapse, hernias, diastasis or diastasis, depending on who you are. Uh, you know, those are the big things that happen postpartum that are large concerns for women and then peezing peeing and sneezing at the same time right that's again a pressure management issue so getting your breath work in and not like wim hof breath work right when we say when i say breath work and i talk about this in the guide it's that uh sit, like reflexive breathing so your your diaphragm and your pelvic floor are working together and then we're learning how to manage pressure so one of the things i've do a version of from the PRI groups, the Postural Restorative Institute. They have that 90-90 breathing where you like lay on your back, yeah. your legs are bent 90 <laughs> degrees against the wall is a version of that. But then, you know, really when you exhale, are you pushing out, which is a pressure management issue, or are you pulling everything inward and then having women use a balloon because a balloon is resistance, right? It's like weight training. If I blow into a balloon, and I notice I bulge out, that's going to set a woman up for pressure management issues postpartum and during labor. And we could start to train that. So when I exhale, I should be contracting inward, not pushing out on the abdomen. And a lot of people, men especially, I've seen it too, we a balloon. And a balloon's like not even that much resistance, but I've seen people who can't blow a balloon up. And you could tell first, like if they push out on their cheeks right like they have dysfunctional breathing patterns so a balloon is like the cheapest easiest tool to assess whether someone has the potential for pressure management issues so you know in that pregnancy we focus on or sorry prenatal right and throughout pregnancy lots of glute activation work right so hinging squatting getting up and down up off the ground because if you you're going to be doing that and if you can maintain getting up and down up off the ground throughout pregnancy you're going to be that much fitter on the backside and then also the breathing work, right? And it's just focusing on that breathing. And when, you, when you're when you carrying something, not holding that, you know, we used to talk about in uh, lifting the Vasalva maneuver, like creating pressure, 
really like kind of ignoring that and more like exhaling and focusing on that 360 contraction with the diaphragm to create stability. And then, you know, that's kind of how I have the prenatal set up. And then postpartum is assessing what was your birthing experience like and really waiting for serious movement 12 weeks to be safe, you know, like ADL. So activities of daily living, like, are you able to get in and out of bed, you know, feed yourself, move around the house, nurse your baby, carry your baby as need be, but like no real hardcore, like we'll say purposeful working out, you know, some doctors will say six weeks, but you know, I think that's more coming from weird insurance stuff where like, that's what yeah, it's it's covered by short-term disability, right? Like, oh, you had a vaginal birth, you get six weeks of short-term disability. Oh, you had a C-section, you get two extra weeks. And so I think some of these recommendations are more coming from when can women quote unquote return to work, right? Before we go uh, too far in postpartum, as you said, during pregnancy, a good rule of thumb is to not do anything new, but you can continue. Uh, and I'll yeah. point out a couple things. Like uh, Bonnie just completed her level one boob nap cert, yeah. and when yeah. Annie was pregnant with uh, Forrest, right? Yeah, yeah. So she was how? I mean, we did her level one certification. So Forrest, seven and a half. Yeah, seven and a half months pregnant, eight months yeah. pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, he's the first yeah. uh, prenatal uh, certificate holder because he was he did everything she did, uh, and then Carrie yeah. had four boys, and she never deviated from her exercise routine through all four and we found yeah. that she that 12 weeks became eight weeks became six weeks became four mm-hmm. weeks. by the time we had riley her fourth pregnancy she i mean she was down for and this is also why um, she's got the other three boys to take care of too but she just kind of went through yeah. it I think, by necessity yeah so she was yeah. down but once you get to that postpartum what would be a good way to um like get somebody moving after say they're six to eight weeks yeah you know i i think you know the example i've been using is kind of follow the baby's lead right so if we look at that neurodevelopment sequence motor development sequence of babies right and kind of almost mirroring that as the mother right like as babies doing tummy time are you doing tummy time as you're as babies learning to roll from stomach to back back to stomach you know head position and slowly incrementally working to standing like mom can be kind of doing that at a slightly more accelerated pace but i think it's really cool that like you have this year long effort until the kid is really moving and kind of taking a step back and like oh i can take a year and like get strong enough to then when my kid is running i'm running Right. Um, And like, I think that is a great way to do it. And then also I would encourage everyone to adopt a floor based lifestyle. One, because I think that's a great way to live. Um, You know, and anecdotally, we didn't have a full floor lifestyle when Bodhi was born, my six year old. And we after he was born, we transitioned fully to a floor based lifestyle. So like sitting on the floor, sleeping on the floor, all those things. And Annie, after Forrest was born, you know, it was miserable getting up and down up off the ground every day and sleeping on like a Japanese futon. But her recovery, not because she was fitter, she was fitter with Bodhi, like in a performance wise, but her overall well-being was faster and her recovery was faster because we had more of a lifestyle emphasis with Forrest, our second. And her recovery kind of mirrored that, which is really phenomenal, right? Like you're talking about Carrie Ann, like having a shorter postpartum journey with each boy. And I think that really plays out from if you focus on health and well-being outside of like performance, but that baseline is slightly higher, right, Right. for health and well-being. Yeah. That's what Carrie Ann's always, it's hard to get her to sit on on the furniture, you know, we (laughs) sit on the floor a lot. But that started with the boys because, you know, we we had four of them under the age of six, you know, she changed Mm -hmm. diapers and she just sort of lived in that area. And yeah, I, yeah, it really helped. That's one of the yeah. influences when I, I wrote the Uncivilized, like, tried to break it down to just three things. That third one was make friends with the floor because that has the most uh, impact, I think. Yeah. I like what you said about the NBS and for the mom to, like, mirror that. Yeah. I, I really like that. I get people at yeah. all the masters, we go right on the floor first, and I say, see if you can turn mm-hmm. over like a baby, mm-hmm. you know, or... Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, it's such a simple thing, but we were like, oh, yeah, I could theoretically take that long right to get fully recovered you know and 
I will, you know, caveat if you have a higher level of physical well being going into the pregnancy and you have a low risk, low complication birth, then you, you could recover faster, right? But that's not necessarily the case. And even women who are super fit, <laughs> excuse me, you know, they could have, you know, an unplanned, unscheduled C-section. And that does a lot of stuff to the abdominal wall, which then, you know, that fascial um, issue in general, like can take a while in scar tissue. If you're not massaging the scar tissue and all that, it can prolong all the fascial issues, right? Uh, which is a whole other thing. Like, I don't know if it's common practice for women who get a C-section to be taught by anyone in the conventional medical world how to massage their c-section scars right yeah. and how important that is even from a pelvic floor standpoint right like you could have a c-section and that scar tissue can still negatively impact the pelvic floor which you know that's, that's but like with patients yeah. how to reactivate those muscles that are cut through mm -hmm. um when you work with a postpartum client and they want to start moving around what are some what are some um how would you say it like criteria to know when you could tell them that, hey, maybe you could start doing this or that, something that they kind of go along with Rock's guide. Like, hey, after two weeks, when you get up down from the floor or whatever, maybe this is time to start reading this. That would be interesting. Yeah, to be honest with my clients, I feel like I am always um, pushing back against this like snapback culture so much that mm -hmm. I am actually generally not suggesting that they do anything. You know, I usually have yeah. to say that they need to rest and um, things like that. But I everything you're saying, I'm loving because I have literally had conversations with moms about um, just sitting on the floor with your baby instead of the couch can be your movement for the day, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we've had discussions about, you know, um, moms sometimes aren't even aware of what a baby rolling actually like naturally looks like. They think they're going to hurt, like the baby's going to hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of conversation about that as well. But um mm -hmm. Generally, I have to fight against the moving and exercising too quickly, honestly, yeah. um, because then there's just this vicious cycle of them not being rested enough. Well, that's that civilized pressure of like yeah. you got to get yeah get three weeks of maternity leave and you got to be back to work and doing all yeah. the stuff. Yeah, I like Roxa uh, that like yeah. you can convince people take a year. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Up. Yeah. I mean, although sometimes the reality is like, again, we have a lot of children. Right. You know, and I'm doing different things. Carrie Ann's doing different things. And we have boys. So you do kind of get a time crunch. But mm -hmm. I mean, she followed her natural uh, inclinations. And like when she was tired, she slept. We let the boys run wild a little bit. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, you yeah. have to. So that's interesting. Maybe well, depending on yeah. the, you can come up with a like a time to recommend this guide. Like, mm -hmm. oh, feeling yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the reason, you know, like I included all four, I'll say the major seasons of femininity, right? And because like you might experience all of those, mm -hmm. right? And there are things from each phase that can be built upon as you go through the journey of, you know, the feminine um, seasons. But, you know, like no woman is ever just going to be like, I'm only ever going to be a menstruating woman, right? Like, and how do we have this guide for life? Like, this is, I'm ultimately going to be somewhere along here or know someone who will be in one of these phases at any one time. Because if we're, you know, really trying to embrace that uncivilized model, right, we have alloparents, right? And we have the elders caring for the baby so moms can recover. And that would be like a perfect world, like postpartum doula, you're like the modern answer to an allo parent, right? You're like, you're yeah. an auntie, right? So people who like, I'm busy and I have disposable income. Can you be my auntie? Yeah. Right. And you get my to come in. My wouldn't exist if we like. Yeah. Knowledge, yeah. But I'd like to point out, yeah, without civilization, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that would be, yeah. yeah. If we lived in normal human society, yeah. still, that would be the thing. Yeah. 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 That would be the thing. And that would be great. Um, but, you know, not everybody, not everybody wants to do that right unfortunately um or can right and so we have these these answers um there was something i was gonna say i forget now. it'll come back to me 
Uh, well, there's a couple of things that um, I really um, am happy to hear you saying. We talked about this in person, uh, you know, almost a year ago, but, um, you know, as a woman who um, has been trying to find um, movement that supports um, being somebody who has a menstrual cycle, it's been really difficult. So one, um, when I have found programs that will honor that, a lot of times um, the message is actually lift heavier while you're bleeding. And I, have you heard this? Yeah, so there's yeah. this lady, she's a PhD and she's got a big following, Stacy Sims. Um, I was probably just I, saying, like, who you meant? <laughs> I was like, oh, he's not. Like, All right, that's cool. We can yeah, believe yeah, yeah. You know, you know, and you know, to her credit, she has done a lot of work, a lot of work in that world. And you know, I downloaded her app. I think it's like Wild AI, because um, I thought I was going to use the platform for my clients. But you can't actually give your own workouts. You have to use their like pre-designed workouts. Mm -hmm. And she works with a her slant is definitely the endurance world. It is the mm -hmm. type A world and it is the performance world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and also some of that like beach body world, which kind of, you're talking mm -hmm. about that snapback. It's kind of that, like, I got to get my body back. Yeah. Right. Um, which has a different connotation than what I think. No, you have a birthing body. Like yeah. that's a whole different body, right? Like you, you created life. Yeah. Um, you know, where I, I'm coming at this, you know, like one, it's natural movement. Right. So that was, I was already, like predisposed to an alternative way of thinking and when i looked at the menstrual cycle and i talked to all like the wise woo women who i had in my community we talked about the seasons and to yeah. me you know like men's season winter yeah like makes sense together right like Absolutely. winter's a time of rest like you're actively bleeding yeah. yes there might be some weird like in research and anecdotal performance that like you can hit a PR right but I think that's I think that is dishonoring yes. the feminine embodiment and the cycle right yeah. by like oh just push through well because then we're you know my take on some of the Stacey Sim stuff is we're masculinizing masculinizing yeah. if that's the right word the the feminine cycle right like no like women are women hang out chill out and if you want to peak like do it with that uh i call it hot girl summer right like ovulation <laughs> yeah I mean, like that is like when you're when you're an ovulating woman you're like your pheromone receptors are peak your performance is peak you're going out and you're trying to get it because yeah. you want to get a baby in your body yeah. and so you're on the prowl you're like that female lion hunting um which fun fact female lions because they have to copulate x amount of times to you know make sure they're fertile they'll yeah continually attack and bite males lion's testicles to force him to mate which i think is hilarious but i think it's a great example of like that's the energy like if you're going to pr as a woman in an event do it while you're ovulating because that's when you're hormonally best suited to it right. and so yeah the stuff like you're talking about there's a lot of information out there a lot of it is this like performance focus sacrifice what it actually i think means to embody the feminine cycle and the woo stuff doesn't get a lot of play yeah, uh, because it's wooey, right? Which I yes. find interesting because I feel like more women are into the woo than are men. And then now there are experts who are debunking cycle syncing, right? Like all these yeah. fitness people like don't cycle sync. It's, it's just gimmicky. It's all these things. But you can ask any women anecdotally, like, do you feel different during different phases of your cycle? Yes. How's that? How's that not a real thing? Right. Right. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. As somebody who teaches about the menstrual cycle, you know, a lot of times um, we have to break through that. Oh, something I thought something was wrong with me. Right. And mm -hmm. they don't even they're not even aware sometimes of these different cycles. So I like that you mentioned that in the guide, you you go over that because it is needed. Um, the other thing that you mentioned that I really like is that you talked about, like, there are times that you are. Um, more likely to get injured if you're not honoring where you're at. And that um, that is one of the reasons I had to leave a certain 
um, fitness group that I was in because people were getting injured and not honoring that. And um, I wanted to be supported in what I needed for that phase of my cycle. Yeah. And this is, you know, I've, I've thought about, is there, I think there's a need um, to have like a train the trainer in and around yeah. like this moving through the feminine seasons. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if the fitness industry wants that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because then we're, you know, I think about when I went through like my trauma informed weightlifting course, I'm like, it, they've said like 70% of gym goers have experienced one big T trauma. Right. And I'm like, that's a lot of people and like no trainers trauma informed. Right. And I think about with women, you know, they're a high consumer. And I call some of the stats out in my guide. Women are high consumers of instructor led and personal trainer led fitness, right? Mm -hmm. Where they're, they're outsourcing some of their effort and putting that care into someone else's hands. Yeah. And I would say the vast majority of trainers, coaches, et cetera, you know, aerobic instructors, like they're not credentialed. Right. at all in the sense of like knowledgeable and then but again it's how do you how do you meet everyone where they are in a class of like 30 people right right it's hard to do it right yeah. and so you know that's where i think we really need to empower the individual and then like i've tried levels of running like menstrual cycle programs and i'm like ah, oh, why isn't every woman just cycling at the same time <laughs> like it would make my life easier right yeah. But that's not the case. Um, so, you know, it is it is a barrier. But at the same time, like we need to have this knowledge base. And then if you have that knowledge base, you have to then know how to coach different peoples at different levels. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if a woman is ovulating and a woman's on her period, those are two different workouts. Right. Okay. And is the coach or the instructor skilled and knowledgeable enough to like, oh, I can give you this workout and this workout. So both people feel they have the value received from that workout but a totally different experience mm -hmm. right and that's that takes a lot of effort um but yeah I, when i was running upstairs there real quick um since we just do one take so stay in <laughs> but i missed did you say so in the guide you do explain le at least the basic anatomy and physiology of the menstrual cycle and uh mm -hmm. just for the people watching the, the the this video on youtube bonnie has i think we put the links up a couple of videos explaining and they're over an hour long Mm -hmm. explaining i've watched uh the the portions of that and since you know i teach the physiology at the university i say they're same quality so it's like getting university level instruction in how your cycle works so that's a great uh resource and then if it's in your guide um that's good too i mean i think everybody should look into this guide or there's some other things we could do to uh, promote it uh shameless plug for the uncivilized book we i have practices uh and principles and priorities in there for when you're working out to kind of do that but that's more universal human as opposed to male female yeah and this would be a good step to do um like a companion volume to yeah. you know for for women yeah. doing that um yeah. the next thing we should probably yeah. talk about we get a chance is some of the men's work too uh that we that you and i have talked about before doing that <laughs> seems to be a, a little more yeah. difficult to, to reach men because of to, to yeah. get them into these things you know it you know it, it really is and you know like kind of to that point i've had a few conversations over the past couple months with several different women who's you know their husband isn't a professional or credentialed fitness personnel like for, fitness person right like they're just like i like to work out because i'm a dude and i know how to work out and like they get really frustrated with their partners when like the partner's like, I don't feel like this is right for me. And like, no, you're just not training hard enough. And I was like, hey, give your give your partner my guide and have them buy it for you. But then there's like that ego there, right? And he can't have someone else tell him what he doesn't know is or what he does know is wrong. So there's like that happening. Uh, but it is really interesting. Like, you know, they're like, oh, that's why I shouldn't work out with my husband. Yes. Because like his needs and his profile is different than mine. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't feel guilty or shameful for like not being able to keep up. Right. right? Well, Which is whole... I don't work out with Carrie Ann because she's stronger than I am. And it's an ego. <laughs> when, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, cause I, I weigh twice. I'm over 200 pounds. I'm twice her size. And we do pull-ups yeah. and she just keeps going. 
So some people don't work out with their wives because they want to be showing up. So it's going to be fair. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't sprint with any more than five 50 meter sprints because I don't right. have the endurance to be faster than her after five. Yeah. So right? it goes both ways. That's yeah. Fine. Just it goes both fair. ways. Yeah. It um, is. You're right. You're right. So um, this would be a good spot but, to put like a cap yeah. on and make sure that uh, just for the video purposes, we keep chatting a little bit afterwards. Uh, and then we have another, uh, another meeting. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We stacked a bunch up, but so you can get um, the guide to moving through the feminine seasons, a natural movement approach uh, that mm -hmm. Rock has worked on. That's in a, uh, a PDF form. A, how is it's that? a PDF. Yeah, it's like a 30 page PDF. Uh, and then, you know, you can buy that right off my website. And then I have my rewild membership that I'm slowly building out content for. And right now, I think there's like 50 videos. And yeah, I was going to ask you about of, the video library. Yeah. So that video library, in addition to some other stuff, um, exists in that Rewild membership. And anyone who buys the guide gets a discount into that membership. And that membership is a lifetime membership for uh, what I feel is a reasonable fee. And then all the movements and workout examples I give in the guide, you can find long format coaching videos. Um, for every single movement. So it's like, it's not like, hey, follow along workouts. It is, you're going to learn how to do these movements. I give lots of coaching cues and in that library and they're long format. And I was, luckily I shot all those when I owned MoveMap Madison. And so I have all the great equipment and it was really well done. And so they're pretty good videos. Um, lots of good lighting, good audio and high quality cues and uh, progression, so. Well, great. I'll make sure that um, we put the, because we've already put up the sort of preview uh, videos for Bonnie's information. And now we'll use this one for yours. We'll put all the links here uh, below okay. so people are interested. But just so that it's on the video too, what's the website where they can go? Uh, strengthplaynature.com. And then under services, you'll see the feminine seasons and also the rewild membership. So, and I'll send those links to you. Oh, cool. good. Perfect. I think what is setting your guide apart is one that it's natural movement and not just, you know, specifically strength training or whatever, right? Um, and that it is covering not just the four seasons of the menstrual cycle, but like all the seasons of a woman's life. I think that's really great because this is definitely going to be a companion for multiple seasons of your life. Yeah. And again, yeah, like it's, it is that as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, I thought about segmented it out into different things. And I was like, no, women deserve all the information at one time. Right. And like, here you go. Just yeah. take it. All of it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. That's good. So uh, uncivilized vitality movement is path. Number one, natural movement is vital. Move on purpose, make friends with the floor and uh, uh, rocks information. This guide uh, Bonnie's more detailed information sort of a, is a be like a foundational level for the guide. So those things will work together with the uncivilized vitality information. And I think it'd be a, a good thing everybody should check out. So um, what do we say at the end? Like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, pick up the guide. All right. And then awesome. we'll just, we'll keep talking. I'll end it there. Okay. Or here. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That was um, really yeah. the big question that I was getting from people when I was sending it out was like if it was a PDF or what it was. So that yeah. that cleared yeah. that up. I think the video library yeah. is good to point out that yeah. it's not just a, a an ebook or a video guide. That there's you did a lot of work in those videos, the long form. Yeah. I mean, how many yeah. hours would you estimate? It's fifty some videos, but hour wise, you're talking twenty yeah. plus hours. Yeah, because I had you know we did multiple takes. Yeah, you um, couldn't watch it in a day. You know, and then, and then that is like at some point I need to find the bandwidth. But it's more like I'm doing a lot of work on people's land, and so like that takes a lot of my energy, uh, which is great. And then I just want to like hang out and create in other capacities. Um, but I I'm slowly going to add like TRX videos, kettlebell videos, like not just specifically natural movement videos, and that's what's there. And then I have to get a couple more um, just different modalities and other things. So the video library is just always growing. Yeah. And then also the blog content and the rewild course that I'm kind of creating. It's like a, a health coaching course 
in and around seven different dimensions. So if anyone's familiar with uncivilized stuff, like it'll be more like kind of like for the lay person, like, oh, how do I practice gratitude? Well, here, let's learn about gratitude and then go try these habits. Oh. Um, so it's really hand, it's a really hand holding rewilding course um, based on the seven dimensions of well-being I chose um, yeah. that I found from other worlds. But yeah, that's what's all in that uh, membership. Um, awesome. Oh, so, yeah. Well, I um, think the men's stuff. Oh, go ahead. Go. I was just gonna say, I think that um, <clears throat> you have a little niche here with this. I really do. I mean, I've like scoured looking for all different types of, oh. um, you know, whether it's a fitness group or whatever. But um, mm. there's definitely not something that's natural movement and, um you know, women specific. So yeah, it's, a, it's a unique intersection. It is. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I pitched it to move now to do <laughs> Buddy. like a women's, you know, a women's only course. And at this point, like, I think if I do it, like, cause I, I quit move now. I don't know if I told you that John, I quit move now. Like I don't, I don't do I, stuff. I'm glad. I, I pitched that senior yeah. course for like four years. Yeah. Then they took yeah. it and ruined it. So, um, I'd be but, you know, because we, yeah, our our schedule is somewhat flexible, but I'm interested in kind of teaching like a seminar workshop in and around the feminine seasons, uh, you know, because I think it's important to have like an in-person experience, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I got to figure out what I want to charge for it. But essentially, like I would have the guide as the, as the handbook. Yeah. And then we would just do like a deep dive, like eight hours or six hours or two days right a saturday and sunday into the different things so kind of like an l1 l2 kind of thing um what would you it would just about be like, if, if you were up in this area and we did uh, a friday through sunday or a thursday through monday workshop we did two days of the feminine seasons and then two days of like the iron john type stuff for the men yeah that way you i could, think that could be you, really you could swap yeah. off kids right yeah Mom goes for Friday yeah. and Saturday morning. Yeah. And comes yeah. home and gets, dad comes yeah. Saturday night and Sunday. Yeah. We, I think we could do something like that. That would be fun. I think that could be really fun. And, you know, I would totally be down because we have, again, we have like a, not a lot of flexibility, but we have to head to Virginia um, for Labor Day weekend for this intentional community conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but after that, um, it's kind of up in the air what we're doing. So, but I will say Michigan um, is kind of high on my list for homesteading yeah, we made opportunities. It to nice. Mostly, is, so is in and around learning where legalization of growing marijuana is. And like Wisconsin, you can't legally grow marijuana for personal consumption. And not that, that that's something I'm like trying to actively pursue, but it's like in this kind of like libertarian mindset, like where are you allowed to be a little more free? Right? Yeah. Um and then uh, like this couple we met. Yeah. Yeah. Like Wisconsin homeschooling is like crazy. You have to document all the hours per year. Um, yeah. We're like, we looked at Maine. It's like, did you do like 100 days? Okay. Yeah. Mich <laughs> Michigan, and, anywhere above this knuckle line, these yeah. counties up here, it's pretty much your, it's a free for all. <laughs> yeah. They do what they want up there. I found a really cool property in the UP. Um, it's already off grid. And he built like a whole martial arts studio on the property. So it's this like huge open concept gym, essentially. And I'm trying to like this Belgian couple, we might go in on some land with who we met in Mississippi. I sent it to them, but I'm like, oh, I don't know if it's going to be available. Because when they get here in August, the goal is to travel the upper Midwest and to New England to look at properties to potentially go in on wow. land together. We're going up so, to yeah. uh, Uncivilized Vitality is going to the Keweenaw Peninsula in late September to do some cave exploring and spelunking in the copper mines. That's so if you guys are all in the area, feel free to, to yeah. join. I'll on. have to keep tabs. Yeah. Right. But no, I would totally be down to try to figure out something on our calendar um, to do a masculine and feminine workshop series. I think that'd be really cool. And again, like to the men's stuff, you know, I think you know, I did a podcast on this guide with a woman in New Hampshire a month ago. It dropped. 
I think. And, you know, but like our take on it is, you know, we have to get like women are engaging with this stuff. Right. So they want to get into that, like animism, that rewilding, like all the big voices that lean into that nature first kind of mentality are women and women following women. Right. Which yeah, is great. Like, that's, women in uncivilized vitality. So he's got all you know, this is, on his team now. Here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's Patrick Mark Shane, a few guys, but not like it started yeah. at the beginning where we, we only had like yeah. Rendell was a pioneer. Yeah. Many yeah. trips. It was Rendell and then me, yeah. you know, but now yeah, it's, it's yeah. gone around the curve, but it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's more women. There's more growth. But since we talked I think, we here in Flint, when you guys yeah. talk about the, the masculine the rewilding, I've been working on some stuff, mm -hmm. doing some research. Yeah. And I, I've got a few ideas, but I'd like that would be a unique uh, workshop to put together. Yeah. You know, we tried it in Mississippi when we were there doing a couples retreat, like weekend event day. And we had a lot of women who were interested and like, oh, this would be perfect for like my adult son. This would be perfect for my spouse. Um, but like I heard also in New England, like this would be great for my man. But then like the don't show up. Like the invitation I mean, is there. Couples retreat so, to me like, always sounds like code for swinger things, so it's avoided. You know, we gotta <laughs> come up with a new way. Because I hear that I'm like, I'm not because yeah. everyone tried to get me and Carrie Ann to come to that couples training in Columbia for like three years in a row. And I'm like, no, yeah. bro, I'm not doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, it's but, you know, it is I am leaning more into the sense of like when women remember the ways, then they can lead men back to nature, right? And I still yeah, fully subscribe to, you know, the lunar cycle is this inherent connection that women have. And we're so removed as males from the animate mm -hmm. that, like, women are our guides. Women are our true north, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to be a certain kind of man to acknowledge that. And I think a lot of weak men don't want to own up that a woman you know but that's why like again like the greeks killed the monster deities that bowed to the goddess right that's why snakes are still demonized right because okay, they're closer to, to the earth maslow's hierarchy needs a self-actualized man is yeah comfortable acknowledging that but women don't have to go through that hierarchy as well as men because women produce other human beings like yeah. directly yeah so it's built in yeah Many, yeah. that men you know, need rights more the process because there are no rights built in for men you hit puberty you die that's about all i got yeah, yeah. That, that part's <laughs> not, i'll send my stuff to you my outline even though it's in my notes yeah English, but. yeah you know and then just acknowledging that like you matter but you don't matter right and yeah. like yeah a lot of dudes don't want to hear and like i find myself sometimes like ah oh, i have needs too like, but then I'm like, no, my kids are more important. Like, I didn't eat the amount of pate I wanted at lunch today because my wife, who just got over her period, and my boys, they need the liver more than I do, right? Like, I, I have a little extra weight, so I can skip eating, like, the lunch I wanted, the, right? The and I can get... I can get In nature, yeah. is sacrifice. And I tried to explain that in the book without getting yeah. too dark about it. That's the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, That's you it. know, and it is... You know, because the flip side to that is men sacrifice all the time. Like we have men dying from heart disease because they work jobs that are stressful and all these other things. They sacrifice their quality of life so their families can have houses and cars and travel sports teams. But I think like the sacrifice you and I are talking about isn't that sacrifice. And that gets conflated, right? Like oh. I sacrifice all the time. Blah. Yeah, but like you whine about it and it's the wrong sacrifice. Yeah, right, you're missing the point, but <laughs> yeah, you're missing uh, the point. But that, that's yeah, that's a civilization thing. We're gonna we're gonna have to wrap up. I got we have another one rated like in one minute. So that's yeah, no worries. Tough, though it always takes we we need to get like a three hour long form and just put it up on YouTube and dare someone to watch all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how like, I could talk for three Easter hours. Egg. Yeah, like well, find the secret word in this four hour video, and we'll send you a free book. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what you and I need to do as a masculine talk and all the issues with masculinity yeah. and just like, you know. I'm afraid that would get me taken off YouTube, but we got to be careful. So, but yeah, we got to we, we, we tune it in. Yeah. Yeah. We can, you know, church it up. Yeah. All right. All right. So we should find a time to do it. But 
Feel free yeah. to connect directly with Bonnie and work stuff out. She took over as okay. the, the chapter scribe, so she's kind of running. Okay. And that'd be easy. Right. No, I get. Sorry about that. Yeah. No worries. All right. All right Bonnie, well. do you want me to just text you the links then? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, and then we'll get them All on the right. video. Because I probably won't get to process this for probably a week after the canoe trip. So it'll be next week. And then we'll put it up mm -hmm. for the June video. So this will yeah. probably go up in June. Yeah, send it to me so I know where they're at when he's finally ready to That's make right. the video. So. Okay. That's yeah. Sounds good. All right. All right. These are the best videos. It's a pleasure talking to you. Put the front end on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Rock. Thanks, buddy. All right. Take care, you guys. See you pleasure later. Pleasure talking. Yep.